Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program 0.25. So in the last episode we tested out uh, one of the rockets that we we're building for the manned mission to Tylo and Vol. We're going to knock both of those contracts out in the same mission. At least that's the goal. Uh, but we found out very quickly that um, it, the, the ship did not have enough Delta V to get into orbit. And I guess it's maybe because the uh, Kerbal Engineer was just lying to me or something, but uh, I'm fairly certain that it had told us we had plenty of fuel. We're looking at stage 7, 6, and 5, uh, basically to get us into orbit. So right now it's saying we have, well, definitely a lot more. There's my cat meowing at me again. <laughs> but uh, it's saying we have about, let's see, that'd be f uh, 15 or 18, rather. Um, 58 rather, 60. So it's saying we have a lot more than we need, but for some reason it just ends up being that it's it's not quite enough. So what I did was, basically long story short, I strapped on another half fuel tank on both sides with some big giant boosters. So that should hopefully um, seal the deal for us and get the trick done, basically get her done. Um, what I might do, let's see, we gotta change the crew out. Can't remember who we had last time, but uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, Freddo. I just like that name, Freddo. And Freddo and Furbo. <laughs> Freddo and Furbo. How about those two guys? Both relatively courageous and not very stupid. So that should be a, a pretty smart crew right there. there again, there's our um, action group. So, anyways, um, let's save it. And I might just come over here and just attach a couple things to the side here a couple just a few more um, struts just for stability because it's very top heavy and uh, tends to be to wobble a bit but that should do us I'm pretty excited about that so let's go ahead and launch this thing one more time hopefully this should successfully get us into orbit and once we're up there with the command module we can send up the uh, basically the drive section, the fuel section. Then together those two parts will push their way out towards the gas giant. The jolly green giant. Alright, here we are. We're going to SAS up. Get this thing close to full throttle. And that is a pretty nice looking rocket if I do say so myself. I might just warp around till the sun comes up. Just so we can see a little bit better. And there we go. We have a nice morning launch here. Let's just take a screenshot because that just looks pretty damn awesome. All right. There they are, the crew. Wait. Thrompton and Bob? What? That is... Ah, oh, for crying out loud. Hold on a second. All right, so here we are. It's another one of those really annoying glitches that happens in this game. For some reason, if you click a certain number of times the VAB, it'll just automatically default the crew back to whatever it was going to give it in the first place. It's really annoying. Hopefully Squad fixes that. But anyway, let's just get this thing going. We got Fredo or Fred Furbo and Fredo Kerbin for their second attempt to get this into orbits. Three, two, one, go. So with a little extra thrust this time around, hopefully we can get this beast into orbit. Once we do that, we can launch the other section. Which I did go ahead and add a similar stage to the other rocket too, because I felt like that was going to be a little heavy as well. A little more fuel, some solid fuel boosters. This thing should be good to go. Very nice looking craft, very top heavy, very very heavy. But you know, to get to Tylo, that's kind of what you need. You need this this big giant heavy thing. Although I have seen uh, some other Let's Players do it with smaller craft. It's very tricky to do. Um, but HOC Gaming, Hawk Gaming, I'm not sure how he pronounces his name officially, but he did it with kind of like a smallish type lander. And what he, he did kind of like a daredevil thing. He he got super low down at Tylo, like, like a five kilometer orbit, if you could even call it an orbit. And he basically got the craft down that way. Here we go, we'll release these things. Very impressive video. I highly recommend watching it. It's very interesting. But he did it that way. But I'm going for more of the heavy lifting type. Kind of go big or go home, basically. 
Uh, I don't have any fins on this thing as usual, but we're just going to rotate this thing around so that it's kind of flush with the horizon. And we're just going to now start the grav turn. As we release these things, we'll go full throttle here. Accelerating at about a G. Ooh, they're turning a little bit. Just keep this thing right on the 90 degree line. Some wings would really help, but uh, I forgot them. I always seem to forget those things. So we got about 1900. That should probably get us into orbit, hopefully. If not, we'll have to go back to the drawing board and uh, basically try again. But that's the beauty of this game. You can always try again. Thrust weight ratio is just over 1, 1 1.2. And our uh, prograde is sliding towards that way just because it is quite heavy. It's very heavy indeed. So it is struggling a bit in the uh, lower atmosphere here, but once we get past this thick stuff, this thing should be able to get into orbit relatively painlessly. I am enjoying a nice cup of tea with lemon and honey right now. Because I do have a cold again, but... I took some cold meds before I started recording this time, so hopefully it should keep down on the clearing of the throat and the coughing and the sniffling and all that. <laughs> That's got to be kind of annoying to listen to, and I apologize. That seems to always happen when I play this game. But anyways, we're getting right up here. We're just going to keep tilting this thing over because we are at Apoapsis 31. Let's see, we've got another minute of thrust left. So again, I'm not sure if this thing is entirely... Um, if it's underpowered. It might still be underpowered a bit. Then again, it might just be perfect, so I'm not really sure. Got about 45 seconds left. I'd like to get this thing into orbit without using any of this fuel, if possible. I kind of feel like that would be bad if we had to use some of the fuel, but maybe we might see how we go. I'm going to call it now. This thing's still a bit underpowered. It's definitely doing better. But still just not quite enough oomph to give it the push that it needs. It is very heavy on top. I mean, look at this thing. 177,000 kilograms. Another five seconds of thrust left. And yeah, it looks like we still just didn't make it. Let's see how much further it would take if we did use a little bit of fuel. Like, I'd feel alright if we uh, only had to use a little bit of fuel, but again, still not quite enough. So I think we're going to just abort this mission. Call this another... Um, what you call it? Uh, can't think of the word right now. Let's just go back to the vehicle assembly building. Let's see what we could do just to get this thing a little better off. Um, so it's just not quite doesn't quite have enough. So let's see. Should we go with a th make like a three, like a try, a try launcher, a try lifter, or could we just slap on? another full fuel tank. We could do that. Let's see, where are ya? Who's over here? Yeah, here we go. Of course we need two. Could do that. I want to go from the outer tanks in. We also want to strut the top of it. go. Um, so that gives us a little more. Oh, didn't like it. For some reason. There we go. Just for stability's sake. Um, will that be good enough? It's a little extra fuel. Um, 
It's not going to do very well for the thrust weight ratio, but I think it should be enough. Let's see. So stage 7 is all these things. That's 1300. Stage 6 is when we cut those off. That's another 2000. And then stage 5 is when we release all these things for another... Oh, I think I know where I'm going wrong. Oh, I'm looking at this. This is the total. I was adding like, okay, there's a thousand here, two thousand here, four thousand here. And that's total between these three stages. This is the individual fuel. I was just reading the darn engineer redux incorrectly. So this is saying if I'm, now I think I have it, we're still about 200 meters per second short. I think that's what that's basically saying to us now. Um, let's see, what could we do to solve that little dilemma? Um, we could just add, let's see, we could add like a tiny amount down here. Where am I? Here we go. We could just like do something like that. 4,500. That should do it. Looks a little looks a little funny but I think that's okay yeah all right so that actually should do it let's just make sure everything's still staged properly and that comes next and that all right yes so let's go ahead and then we have to again make sure the crew is correct <laughs> see what I mean it always defaults to the other guys Fredo and Furbo <laughs> Fredo and Furby Furby Kerman all right, that is gonna be it, hopefully. Now let's just go ahead and tack on a couple of these Separatron engines, just because I feel like these are getting quite lengthy, and it would be good to have Separatron engines in here. Down just a little bit, and we want to make sure that they are staging with these. So we'll just bump them up one stage. There we go, and it's on both sides. That should just help push these things out of the way when they decouple, and everything should be fine. Let me just check the crew one more time. Up oh, and look at that! Bob and Thromden back in the crew again. That is an annoying glitch. Please fix that squad. Please. We have such a good game. There's just so many little funny little glitches. But anyways, that's okay. I still love the game. It's constructive criticism. <laughs> My god, this whole episode is just going to be me failing at launching this thing. But I feel like once we get it down, I can make a little more, a couple more cuts. Just to make sure the episode isn't just me doing this, but um... Ooh, that is shaky. Not really sure why. But oh well. SAS, let's just go ahead and warp. So the sun rises, because I feel better that way. There we go. Yeah, I don't really like how that shaky that is, but uh, anyway, let's get this thing going in three, two, one. Oh my goodness. Not sure why all the wobbling, it is strutted up. Not gonna worry too much about it. Here we go with launch part two. So what I might do is just do a little cut since you guys have seen this already. And I'll get to basically the exciting parts, basically when we start uh, staging things. I always feel like it's the best part, but <laughs> all right, we'll get right to it. All right, we're back, starting our gravity turn now. The ship does have a strange, like, sort of wobble to it. I'm not really sure why. I'm not really sure where it's coming from. The struts are kind of failing me, They're letting me down here. But I think we got a hold on it now. It started like really drifting to the side when I did my roll maneuver, but I think we got a hold on it now. There goes those things. Very nice, very nice. Get this thing up to full blast. I think we're alright now. We have another 2,000 meters per second to go in this stage. Hapwaps is 32. I 
feel a little bit better about the mission this time around. Now, some of you are thinking, eh, you know, you probably could have just, you know, gone with the previous design and used the, uh, the top part to get yourself into orbit, but I just don't like doing that, you know. I built this thing just to strictly be the lander, and I, I don't want to, you know, go over budget on fuel. I want to just basically keep it the way that I intended it to be. But that's just the way I play, you know. Everyone plays this game a little differently. And uh, so, you know, no one's really right or wrong, basically. Just efficient and inefficient, I feel like. Speaking of inefficient, this curve's a little bit steep. Might try to push it a little bit towards the horizon a little more. Yeah, I think we're going to make it this time. Pick up a little more lateral velocity. That just looks amazing. Stunning. There's our uh, first airplane we made down there on the little island. Secondary little launch pad down there. Or runway, rather. A couple of mountains over there. Waps is 55 and climbing. Now, according to the maths, this thing should have enough delta V to uh, to escape the atmosphere. Of course, maths has failed me before, <laughs> but I think it'll be right on the money this time. This looks pretty good. It's got another 20 seconds left. I think we'll just barely make it. We might have to use the top portion just to circularize, but as far as I'm concerned, that's okay. Another five seconds. Alright, we'll have to let it go. This ain't too bad. Alright, we'll end it right there. Put the maneuver node. And we'll just circularize this thing. Only another 153 to go. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. So I think I think we'll accept this. There's the music, letting us know we are in orbit. Only going to be another 13 seconds, so we'll burn at about 6 or 7 seconds. Oop, there it is. And Z. Press the 1 key, just get these solar panels out. There they go. And that's us. Alright. Not bad, we had to use a little bit of fuel in here, but we're going to be just fine. So this is just fine. Uh, it does have RCS, that's right. It did give it a little bit of RCS. Good, so this thing is in orbit. I'm just going to point her north. And what we'll do now is launch the other section so we can get these things all set for a rendezvous. So I'll get that all set up. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad with the fuel section and basically the drivetrain. Basically, I've added a couple little extra fuel tanks just to make this thing also able to get into orbit. Let's go ahead and we'll set the command module as the target. And let's see, where are we? We are right about here. So we'll just warp time until this thing gets to right about here. Just so we can make our rendezvous a little bit easier. Watch the auroras dance around on the poles of the planet. So yeah, the reason we're doing this, if you guys said uh, missed my rendezvous tutorials, basically you you want to leave when this thing's right about uh, right about here, basically. So that by the time we get up there, we'll be basically right on top of it. That's the idea. All right, so we'll just get this thing throttled, and here we go. <laughs> 
accelerating at about one and a quarter G's. That's pretty good. We'll leave it at that. So this thing's kind of funny looking. It's kind of like a, I don't know, like a flying antenna basically. But uh, basic idea is uh, it's going to be the drivetrain of our ship basically. It's going to dock up right here with the command module. It's going to have two atomic engines doing the work. It's going to have extremely low thrust weight ratio, but it's going to get us there. You know, and when you're in space, thrust weight ratio doesn't really matter too much. It's more about the, uh, the ISP, the, the uh, <laughs> Internet Service Provider. No, the uh, specific impulse of the engine. And those nuclear engines are quite fuel efficient. Oh, that's interesting. We can see the clouds basically right here. But uh, there's us. This thing is quite heavy. Here comes the uh, boosters decoupling. Alright, so since you guys probably pretty much seen all this already, let's just do a little cut till we get a little bit higher. I just thought this was a particularly nice view with the moon right there in the background. What a lovely view. Very, very lovely. This game is very pretty. So we're about to do our staging. Let those things go. Got a little bit of a turn. Oh, a little bit of a roll happening. Just cancel it out. Get right back on that 90 line. Again, some fins would have been nice on this thing, but... Silly me. Um, Alright. Let's just keep pushing it over. So we, this thing is really catching up on us now. Basically, it's almost straight overhead at the moment. You can probably see it. There she goes, actually. <laughs> so there's our Tylo command module zipping on overhead. So it is a bit... It's going to be a bit ahead of us, but by the time we get our apoapsis out here, the, the basically the apoapsis... I don't know if it's the proper plural term, but the apoapsis <laughs> will basically be maintained on top of each other. But however, what we don't want is our prograde vector to be too far off the 90s. We'll just fix it a little bit. I'm moving down, and that should actually fix it for us. Yes, there we go. Alright, we're getting there. Again, this thing is very heavy. A lot of fuel to push around. It's got to push around not only its own fuel, but all this fuel up here. Basically, using fuel to push fuel. <laughs> it is struggling a bit, but our thrust weight ratio is good. 1.6. So we are getting up there. Okay, we're getting a little bit higher now. We're getting there. These things are going to start touching very soon. It's going to start giving us our basic closest encounter. Still got another 400 meters per second left. And... There we go. Just get this thing up to about 100. Okay, there we are. So... We're a little bit behind it, but I have faith that uh, once we move it out a little bit, we can get these things to meet up on the next pass. And in fact, there it is. Right about there. It's not bad. See, it will meet it about 2.7 kilometers away. 2.0. Not bad. Not bad at all. We do have to... Ooh, we basically have to... Uh, shallow up a little bit that's why we got to catch up on it a little bit so we're not going to quite make the 100 uh, kilometer orbit but that's okay that's how this works basically and we should have just enough fuel to make this happen that's perfect that's good news all right so we'll just get this thing pointed at that maneuver node looks like we are in space now so let's see like the two key uh these are my favorite solar panels Very nice. Very, very nice. 
but she is cumbersome this whole time I'm pressing the uh, D key just to try to get it to move over she just doesn't want to move maybe a little RCS will help yeah it's doing it man she is cumbersome It's going to be about 10 second burn. We've got 14 seconds left. It's pretty good. So burn in about 5 seconds. Getting there. Here we go. Get this thing lit up. We'll just RCS ourselves in basically as close as we can. Maybe we'll just use a little bit of thrust. There we go. 2.4. We'll just go backwards. N. That's about it. 2.2 kilometers we're going to meet up on the next orbit. So we're going to basically chase it around, come inside the orbit a little bit to 78. That'll allow us to speed up and catch up on it. And then by the time we get to about here, we'll be right next to it. But we'll save that for the next episode. I feel good now. We're basically lined up, ready to go. We're going to chase that craft around. And the next episode, we will do our rendezvous. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you then.